Joko sana Naikan Meron? Oo. Ito. Hello. Uy, oo nga. Social distancing. Naririnig. May symptom kami nun. Hindi mo naramdamang ano, parang, uy, katapos ako ito. <laughs> Si ano, si Angelina. <laughs> oh, hindi naman kayo wala naman kayo dito. Sorry, sorry. So, so, meron tayong kasama ngayon dito. Ilan? Apat. Apat na panunood. Uh, share to your group. Share to your WhatsApp group in your unit.
Ito, maganyan-ganyan din ako. Dalawin gaganyan din ako. Ano yung tura ngayon? So, 15 minutes pa tayo. Maghihintay, guys.
Nandiyan ka ba ngayon? Check mga yung audio mo. Hello, good afternoon. To the four participants of this online session, can you just give feedback by sending your live chat if the audio is um, audible or if you can see the shared presentation? Win Ben. Win Ben. Who is this Win Ben? No? No? Um, Win Ben. How are you? What's your name, Win Ben? Win Ben. So, Filipino ito, di ba? <laughs> Tinig naman daw, sabi ni Win Ben. Ana? Pati ko Anna, hi, how are you? Ah, Anna, Anna Benhamia o Anna Larosea? Anna Lisa? Annabel? Kasi ang daming Anna. Hi, Anoop, how are you? How's the audio right now? Nakadistract yung narinig ko yung nagsisid ba? Kapag hihinaan ko ba? Check, check ko nga. Ito. Check nyo nga kung meron pa rin. Kung nawala na. Ah, meron. Narinig. Kasi minute ko dito. So it's okay. laptop and it just give me your feedback audible or good quality of the audio right now when ben is ano ben hamia hindi si ano ben kasi si ano ben kumagapang pa yung kanyang ano internet ano 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 Palaan May feedback pa rin kasi nag-mute na ako. Or dahil sa mga narinig na naka sa inyo. <laughs> Sino mo ngayon pa lang? If you are using your mobile phone, if you are in the mic, and you will see the like button and, <laughs> and like it. Thumbs up. Oh, Into my feedback. So, ihinaan niyo yung ano niyo, yung volume. Kaya, i, ano niya na, isang pinakadududu na lang kasi narinig yun naman ako. <laughs> Six minutes to go before we start our presentation. Schedule nyo talaga ngayon. Pusang loob ka lang dahil magpapaano ka sana. Ah. Okay. Narinig kayo ito? Hindi ka natin alam, no? <laughs> Narinig? Narinig, ha? Is good right now. Ano, can you just tell if it's okay now? Even if the audio in the laptop is mute, 
if you can still hear me loud and clear. Miss Ann Curtis? Are you still there, Miss Ann? And Diane Zubiri? Yes, naririnig better. Okay. Are you on duty or stay at home? Miss Ann Curtis. Night later. Aha, night later. Hello, are you still there? Hello, are you still there? If you're available, hello, later, please come here in the auditorium so you can help me in the competency. Ikat talaga ba yan? Mel, hindi ka na-schedule na yan? Yan na. Push hard! We're here! Push hard and fast. Are you okay? First time niyo sa auditorium, <laughs> hindi niyo. <laughs> pero, pero iba yung entrance nung ano, oh, pa Japan-Japan. <laughs> Kala ko, no, Japan eh. <laughs> Schedule kayo talaga ngayon. Good. Kayo lang, based on the schedule, only we who are here. Malapit na mag-start. Dami ng attendees. Ano? 5,000. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5,000. Punong-punong sa auditorium.
Sabi ni Anne Curtis, masyarakat ang handa sa lahat ng years. <laughs> Napaka-informal eh, no? <laughs> shout out. Make a shout out, please. Make a shout out sa lahat ng years. Na. Sana lang nakaabang din sila. Busy na sila, may mga patients na sa ER. Few minutes more and we will start. And with this number, I think we can finish all for the competencies and we will have also a to so help us later. Daming nanonood ngayon, no? 7 million viewers. <laughs> Nakahala tayo, naka-live screen tayo. <laughs> uh, Pinapashout out yung mga, ano, si Cherry, saka si Apple ng Nico. <laughs> Alam mo, wala sila dito, eh, no? <laughs> Stay lang ako dito sa podium para marinig tayo ng mga nasa timbahay. <clears throat> so, what do you learn from everything? Bukod kay Winben na nandito ngayon, sino pang kasama natin dito sa online na naka-witness ngayon? Baka pwede mag-iwan ng comment para makita natin kung sino yung kasama natin dito. Jane, welcome to our session, fourth session online. And number eight, this is session number eight in the auditorium and session number four via online YouTube live. ER, OPD, we don't have. ER, OPD. Only one ER. How many Nico stuff here? Three. Melissa, you're a female ward or OR? Ate Alex, male ward now. <laughs> Dwayne. Adona Audrey. Okay. 
साइन फ्रॉम कितना है जस्मिन एंड लाउसा ब्लेसिंग फ्रॉम निकट पार्टमेंट Maya online. Also, Christine Komoro. Hi, po, Christine. Of female ward. Ah, female ward. Female ward available. Right. Yeah. Yes. Maya. YouTube live. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so good afternoon everyone. Welcome to this number eight session in the auditorium and session number four via online for our nurses. And this presentation is entitled COVID-19 Updates. So we have here IPC or infection prevention and control guidelines from the NOH, from the CDC, from the WHO combined. But mostly what we're talking about are the NOH guidelines here in Saudi Arabia. Regarding the COVID-19 and some infection control guidelines for our hospital. So I'm Bill and Julia, nursing quality and education coordinator here. And let's start our presentation with this coronavirus, COVID-19. How it took its name. We all know that this is coronavirus disease 2019, and this is infectious disease caused by severe acute respiratory syndrome. Coronavirus 2 or SARS CoV 2. So, with this, we know that it has first been identified in Wuhan, China in December 2019. And WHO already announced that this is already a pandemic in, and already out and across 185 countries and territories. And this is. Um, in this presentation, last May 6, when we checked, there are more than 3.74 million cases, and it's increasing every day, and there are around 289 deaths. But the good news there are that the number of our recoveries are now more than a million. Recoveries from the more than 3 million cases all over the world. So one of the most important things that we have to remember have to know as nurses we never audit the management ipc team or the quality department will do their rounds in your unit you have to be confident enough to answer their questions you have to be confident in demonstrating whatever they will ask you for example we ask you to perform hand washing hand rubbing running and dusting of your ppe all of this should be complied or answered confidently, and you're giving the correct answers for them. Welcome to our colleagues from other departments. Please get your, the copy of your competency here in front. All of, all of you should have the copy of the competency, and the attendance should be signed, please. Okay. First off, uh, first off the case definition, social distancing, reminding social distancing should be contained. Okay, so the case definition, we have two case definitions of COVID-19. So first, the case definition we have, we have, oops, sorry. Okay, we have the number one, patient with acute respiratory illness or ARI, it may be sudden onset of at least one of the following. First, fever, cough, shortness of breath, and in 14 days prior to the onset of the symptoms, we have one of these epidemiological links. So first, we have to ask our patients, do you have any travel abroad? So before we are asking 
if you have any trouble to China, have you been to Bahrain, to UAE, to Italy, like this. But now we are asking, do you have any history of travel abroad? Because it's already pandemic, more than 185 countries and territories are affected by this disease. Second, we have to ask, are you a resident or have you uh, have you uh, been in this high risk areas in the in the kingdom? We have six identified uh, high risk areas by the MOH, our Ministry of Health. First, Riyadh, one of the six high risk areas is Riyadh, Jeddah, Makkah, Medina, Kufu, and Katif. So these are the six identified high risk areas by the MOH in Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Next, we have to ask, do you have close physical contact prior to the onset of the symptoms with a confirmed case? So this is number three. And lastly, we will have to ask if the patient is working in a healthcare facility. So it may be hospital or clinic. We have to identify because this is part of the epidemiological link connected to the first clinical presentation of COVID-19. Second clinical presentation, these are adult admitted cases with unexplained SARI or severe acute respiratory illness, either hospital acquired or community acquired pneumonia. Again, the first case definition, this is ARI, so the patient may have fever, cough, protest of breath, and 14 days prior to onset, we have four epidemiological links. Travel abroad, visit to high-risk areas, contact with confirmed case, close contact, and working in a healthcare facility. The second clinical presentation in this suspected case, case definition, SARI. Okay, admitted adult case with unexplained SARI is either community acquired or hospital acquired pneumonia. And no Epidemiological link is required for the second clinical presentation. The question now, how do we define close contact? Okay, close contact, is it skin to skin? So are we only considering skin to skin or there's a specific distance? In physical or close contact us with 1.5 meters and they added a time element of staying with the COVID positive case with more than 20 minutes, okay? Aside from the proximity of within 1.5 meters, the patient with the exposed individual will be in a closed area, maybe like this, and we are staying together for 20 minutes and more. Okay, so this is the clinical presentation to uh, case definition for the suspected case. And some of our patients may also have other symptoms like gastrointestinal symptoms, like nausea, vomiting, um, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Okay, then this is the case definition for suspected case. How do we define confirmed case? So simply, this is defined as the suspected case with laboratory confirmation of COVID-19. Okay. Do you have any questions at this point? Next. In close contact, aside from what I've mentioned, proximity of one minute is more than 20 minutes. Also, another one is having unprotected direct contact with infectious situations or excretions of the patient, like the D are being coughed on or touching loose tissues with their hands. So this is also part of the definition of close contact. So now what you're seeing in your screen is the respiratory triage checklist. So this is available in visual triage. So what the visual triage nurses are asking these questions to the patients. This checklist has four or has two components. First component on the upper portion is the exposure risk. Exposure risk, which include, includes the epidemiological link that we have discussed a while ago. If the patient has any history of travel, 
things like this. But you will notice that members of the group very much closer to camel or camel product, meaning this is still a combination of COVID-19 and worst cov in this checklist. So any of this, you have the visual triage should be competent, um, bilingual. That's why in ER, we have a group of nurses there who will be assigned specifically as visual triage nurses. They have to speak bilingual, bilingual, and they have to ask all these questions you know, uh, fast. Okay, not more than one minute, around 30 seconds, they have to ask all of this because time is very critical in ER. So what we have to underline, whenever, for example, that the patient is resident of Dian or resident of Katif. They have to underline visiting or being resident, underline it, and score of three. And they have to ask all the questions based on uh, what is applicable for the patient. Next component of this checklist is the clinical signs and symptoms. And also we have here the medical history. So all of this should be asked to the patient. What is the score which will require the patient to proceed with the respiratory pathway? So four and above. Okay, so four and more, the patient will be instructed to do hand rubbing, to, have to wear a surgical mask. Then a nurse will accompany the patient to the ER door for the respiratory pathway. The patient will go directly to the, to the isolation room, negative, negative pressure room. If not, they will be staying in the waiting area with HEPA filter designated for suspected or confirmed COVID cases. So we know that we are putting our patients suspected or confirmed in a negative pressure room. Otherwise, they will be in a single room with HEPA filter. HEPA filter stands for hepatitis or what? High efficient particulate air. HEPA filter and the room, the negative pressure room should be checked daily if we have patient and weekly if we don't have patient. So we have to maintain the negative pressure should be negative 2.5 and below. Geraldine, negative 5, is it acceptable? Negative 2, Apple, acceptable? Negative 2, acceptable? Petad, negative three, acceptable. Elizabeth, negative one, acceptable. Elizabeth, yes. So all the, <laughs> all my questions, the answer is yes. So two of you get wrong answer. If we say negative 2.5 and below, what is the mean? Negative three, if it, the number is going up, if it's negative, meaning it's going below, okay? Meaning negative 2.5 and below. Negative 3 is below this number. Negative 4, 5, negative 6. All these are acceptable. But above negative 2, like negative, negative 2.5, if negative 2, negative 1, 0, these are not acceptable because it's going to the right direction, to the positive direction, okay? It has to be going back. Clear? <laughs> okay. ACH or air cycle should be checked by engineering department weekly, and we are expecting 12 or more in the air cycles per hour. The temperature in the in the negative pressure room should also be checked. The acceptable temperature range is 20 to 24 degrees Celsius. The humidity is 20 to 60 percent. So I will ask you, how about in the mitigation room, Ivan? What is the acceptable temperature in the mitigation room, Ivan? Is it the same, 20 to 24? Have you visited your mitigation room? 21 to 24, is it correct, Fitad? Yes? 
Are you sure? Ah, every day. I'm discovering those numbers are <laughs> forgotten. We just finished our Sibahi. We just finished our JCI. And this is very important. In mitigation room, we are storing there our medications. We have to make sure that we are maintaining the temperature, the humidity in the acceptable range. How are we going to report it if we don't know the acceptable ranges? So we have to remember, Jane, 18 to 25, very good. This is acceptable temperature in the meditation room. 18 to 25 degrees Celsius. How about in uh, medication room humidity? Melissa, humidity of the medication room. Is it the same 20 to 60? What? 40 to 60, is it a guess or? <laughs> is it a wild guess or, <laughs> or what? Dwayne, humidity of the medication room. Do you have medication room? But we have to know <laughs> what is the acceptable humidity in the medication room? 30 to 70 percent. Okay, are you remembering this? Next question in the store. What? Is the acceptable temperature in the store province? Acceptable store temperature. You know? No. Uh, how about temperature? That's very hard. Twenty one to twenty one. 21 to 24. In the store, the temperature acceptable is 21 to 24. How about the humidity? The same with the mitigation room, 30 to 70. That's why. Checking it, so at least there will be a retention if you are looking at this. Because if you check, this is the number, for example, um, this is 35 for this day. So, just try to remember if 35 also is it acceptable or not, or we're just copy, copy paste the previous reading. So, we have to do it accurately. Next. What is the acceptable distance between patients in ER? ER. So the patients should maintain 1.2 meters apart. Correct. How about in. Are you from ICU? Pavitra? Yes, Pavitra. Acceptable um, distance of patients in ICU? 2.4. Very good. Incubators in NICU, Apple, 2.4, very good. In the world, Itad, 1.2. We only have two numbers here. 1.2, if you can hear. 1.2 for ER, for waiting area, for the world, 1.2 meters apart. For the critical area, I see you, Nico, 2.4 meters apart. The beds, the incubators, the cribs, or the chairs in the waiting area. Any questions till this point? So next, this slide is showing you awareness sign number 76. And we are explaining here the definition of close contact. We already done with this. But... If a healthcare worker will have a contact, will be exposed to a positive case, there are three types of monitoring. First, self monitoring, meaning the staff will monitor his or her symptoms on her own. Okay? She or he may check for the temperature twice a day and what are the symptoms he or she may experience. Self monitoring. Next. Active monitoring. What do you mean by this? In 
active monitoring, there is a regular communication to the exposed individual. For example, the MOH learns that you have uh, you are exposed or, or you are positive. For example, they will call you every day. What are your symptoms today? Do you have fever? Do you have cough? Do you have shortness of breath? And another example, for example, we have a chat group in WhatsApp, for example. And the they're asking you or you have to report your daily symptoms. Have you experienced this before? Somebody is calling you for the symptoms or you have example of this and another one self monitoring with delegated supervision another example is the ARI we are giving our symptoms somebody is asking from the bridge desk they will ask you what are your symptoms today do you have cough do you have fever do you have, do you have shortness of breath and this is over, uh, the other side of the self care facility so we are self monitoring with delegated supervision Facility. What if the healthcare worker, the nurse, for example, develops a symptom or there's a sign and symptom of COVID, like there's ERI, there's personal uh, problems? What, what should be done? This staff should go for physician assessment. So they have to reassess by the ER physician and they will tell you what will be the disposition. Or what will be the decision for you? Will you stop working? Will you do NPS? Will you be isolated? Do you need quarantine period? So all this will be decided after the assessment or trip up by the medical evaluation by the physician. Any question till this point? Okay, now this is slide. It's showing you the nursing awareness sign number 77. Have you seen this before? Can you see the hands of those who have seen this before? Only one, only two have seen this before. Who saw this before and delete from the email? Is there anyone? <laughs> okay, skip. Skip another awareness sign. Skip it. Okay, so this is very important. This will guide us what will be the monitoring parameter, what will be the management if we have such exposure to a positive case. So let's start with the first scenario. We have a patient wearing a mask. Okay, if the patient is wearing a mask, we have to consider the healthcare workers' PPEs. So. If the patient is wearing a mask and the nurse is not wearing a mask, not wearing any PPE, this is medium risk exposure. Okay? The nurse is not wearing anything, not wearing any PPEs, not wearing mask. The patient is wearing mask, medium risk exposure. So what will be the monitoring to be done? Active monitoring. What is the action? What's the management? If the nurse or the healthcare worker exposed to a patient with this situation should stop duty, do the swab, and resume or go back to duty after a negative result. Is it clear? Now, what will be the risk exposure if the patient is wearing a mask? Then the nurse is not wearing face shield, not wearing gown, not wearing gloves, but the nurse is wearing a mask. This is no exposure. If no exposure, the management will be detained only for NPS, continue your duty. So very important if we are doing the tracing, whenever we have exposure, we have to know, are we protected or is the patient or wearing mask because this will be the consideration of the management. Any question? If the patient is wearing a mask, 
the nurse is wearing a mask, again, this is also low exposure. All low exposures, continue duty, no need for NPS. Next, in this situation, the patient is the patient is wearing but now the patient is not wearing a mask so if the nurse is also not wearing a mask or not wearing ppe this is considered high risk exposure this is also do the NPS, we will have up to 14 days after the exposure so high risk will have longer quarantine period how about if the patient is not wearing a mask and there will be an AGP or aerosol generating procedure to be done by the nurse, but healthcare worker not wearing the face, uh, face shield and not wearing N95, meaning the nurse will do the AGP with surgical mask. For example, the nurse will do mobilization. The nurse will do suctioning to the patient. The nurse will go inside only with surgical mask. So what is this risk? This is medium risk. So the nurse will stop duty, do the NPS, and resume duty after the negative result. So if you will remember, if you will notice, all the below will have the same. I have my own way of memorizing it. Maybe you have your own, but Can you see here? If patient is not wearing a mask, can you see it? The nurse not wearing a mask. This is high risk. Okay. High risk. Next. If the patient is wearing a mask, the nurse is wearing a mask. It is Medium, medium risk. If the nurse is wearing a mask, the patient is not wearing a mask. Is it? What? Low risk. If the nurse is wearing a mask, the patient is wearing a mask. Is this? Low risk. So with this illustration, which is, I don't know if it's visible, can you see it again? Yes. So this is divided into two. Two situations, the nurse is not wearing a mask. So the frequency of the exposure risk is only high and medium. The nurse is not wearing any not wearing mask. You will ask, is the patient wearing mask? If yes, it's medium. If both of you are not wearing, it will be high. High, what's the action for this? Stop duty, do NPS, stop work after resume after 14 days. Okay. Next, if the nurse is wearing a mask, all of this, if the patient is wearing or not, both will be low risk exposure. So the relevance or the importance of universal masking will come in. Okay, because if we are wearing a mask, it will guarantee low exposure risk. As long as we are wearing proper masking, we are changing our mask when? After duty? What? You'll be exposed. It will be infected. You have to change your mask. We have our protocol. How or where are we removing or doffing our PPEs? Right? So if it's surgical mask, if you, you went inside the patient's room, you will doff all your PPE inside the patient's room except for N95, which will be removed out, outside the patient's room after closing it, or in the anteroom of a negative pressure room. <laughs> to our medical staff, take the attendance sheet and please get the checklist for the competency. The, the competency checklist is here in front. So for those who doesn't have yet, so 
you are seeing the, se the sequence of the questions that you will have later on. So I am calling a note and anything else you want to have to help me in the competency later on. Okay, any question till this point? Okay, now let's proceed. The next topic, if we have colleagues before who have been uh, tested positive, what will be the action for them? How they will be cleared from COVID-19? Some um, survivors here in uh, in the auditorium right now. Okay, so what? Correct me if I'm wrong because you experienced this firsthand. I will tell a story. Tell a story. Tell a story of how the process of um, clearing the positive case from those who have been uh, tested positive before. Once the, the staff will have a positive result, somebody from the hospital or from MOH will call, then they will be fetched um, by ambulance and they will be sent to a government facility specific for positive cases. All their things will be provided there, inshallah, and, and they need to have two negative results to be discharged. Correct until this point? Yes, so they may take two days. Can we ask how many days you've been there? Did you count the days? Or it's like continuous <laughs> day, night, day, night, and we don't know the orientation of day, night. How many days you've been there? Uh -huh. The first swab after the positive result was taken seven days after arrival in the government facility. Then the second swab, uh, the second swab was taken 48 hours after the first, uh, after they waited for the negative result before they took the second swab. Okay, is it the same scenario with others? No. How? What is the scenario there? Once you have the positive result, after after two days, they took it's like every three days. So every three days, they are getting your sample samples. You have two two positive results consecutive. Or negative results because you have two positive results. Ah, so so it is uh, like um face to face basis maybe. So guidelines from the MOH before discharge from this government facility, they have to get two negative results. So we will be the same with that. Okay, next after this. First criteria, it has to be all of the criteria that you met. Second, after being discharged in this government facility, after the two negative results, they will be quarantined in a facility of the institution, of the hospital. And in our case, they are quarantined in the same accommodation, correct? So they have to stay there for 14 days of quarantine. Did you extend? Some of them may extend. Why? Because of the symptoms. Because the third criteria of being clear, they have to be at least 48 hours asymptomatic of people symptoms. So to summarize, the criteria to be clear, to be cleared from COVID-19 after being positive, they have to get two negative results. They have to finish the quarantine 14 days and at least 48 hours. Asymptomatic clear. Clear. When can they go back to duty? So after, um, have you been reassessed? You just finished this and no reassessment. Back to duty. You've been reassessed? No. Ah, uh, so there is a reassessment, physical, face to face, uh, reassessment. 
assessment by the IPC consultant over the phone, and you are just using terms and terms. Okay. At least, so these are the criteria to be clear from COVID-19. Now, we have to ask, we have to know, what are the transmission precautions of COVID-19? So here in our hospital, this is contact and airborne. So I will tell you what is written in the policy because maybe some of you will go and check. Is it really correct? Because in the policy, what is written in the COVID-19 management, COVID-19 is contact, droplet, and whenever applicable, it will be airborne. So this is what we have in our previous educational material. And this is part of our competency before. But this is part of the update Forget about that. We have to remember that the transmission precaution of COVID-19 here in our hospital is contact and airborne. Okay, next question. What are the PPEs that we have to use if we will have our exposure? For example, we will go to the room of this positive case. What PPEs are we going to wear? So we have to know what the isolation signs. I hope all of you now have seen these signs. Am I correct? I'm assuming that all of you are familiar with this new updated isolation signs. Can you show your hands who are already updated with this? No one? One. Well, this is the ICU. Same ER. The rest, this is your first time to see this? Aha. Uh -huh. So we will discuss. Okay, in the floor, I cannot see. Okay, anyway, ah, because the update here, the IPC, I sent this to the printing press until now. We are waiting for the copies to be distributed to all the units. But I know in ER, they have the initiative to print and laminate the MOH recommendations. And I see you also have. But because you have followed this very much, <laughs> Okay, so contact precaution before it's color. What's the color of contact precaution before? Red. So forget about it. We have to remember contact is green. Contact green grass. Contact green and the PPEs to be worn is gown and gloves. The same, the same with what we know before. PPE for contact, green, is gown and gloves. Where are we going to remove the PPEs if we encounter the patient with contact precaution? Inside the room before leaving the door. Okay? Clear. Now, droplet professional color, red. Droplet, blood, blood, red. PPE is in this droplet now is only surgical mask. Okay, we have to remember droplet only surgical mask. So, where are we going to remove the surgical mask? Inside the patient's room before leaving the door. Next, airborne is color blue air. What PPE are we using if this is airborne precaution? Only N95. Clear? Where are we going to remove N95? Outside the door after closing it. Or if it's a negative pressure room with anti room, it has to be removed in the anti room. Clear until this point? I'll ask you, what is the color of What is the color for contact precaution? Droplet. Airborne. What's the PPE for contact precaution? Gloves and gown. What's the PPE for droplet precaution? Surgical mask. Very good. What's the PPE for airborne precaution? N95. So COVID-19 is contact and airborne. 
do go inside the room and this is positive or suspected case of COVID-19, what are your PPEs? Gown, mask, the 95, and gloves. Is that clear? Where, so do you have any observation? No more eye shield. No more face shield. Yes. Based on MOH guidelines, the updated recommending to use uh, regularly, routinely the face shield. But we are using this whenever applicable. Now, AGPs are aerosol generating procedures. If we will perform a procedure which will generate aerosols like suctioning, um, what else? Nebulization, NPS, uh, intubation, PPR, bronchoscopy. These are generating aerosols. So if we will do a procedure which are classified as AGP, we have to wear N95 and face shield. Aside from um, if we are using the okay. But the more, more important thing here, face shield and the air uh, N95 mask. Do you have N95 fit, fit test? Do you have the fit size for you? Not really. <laughs> so you have, if you will be assigned to handle a positive case and you don't have available size of N95, but there are other sizes, will you handle this case? Do you have a privilege to say no? Yes. If you don't have the fit size, you don't have the available N95 size for you, this is safety issue. So all of those who are in fourth floor right now have their valid fit test, which is valid for how many years? Can you check your fit test cards? Do you have fit test card with you? Because during the rounds of the IPC, of the surveyors, of the audit, they are usually checking, they have your card or the MOH. In the rounds before, they're asking, show me your card. Okay, this is 1860 or Reflex or Aura or whatever size. They show me the available mask. Show me if this fit test is available in your department. So all the time, whenever you are on duty, you have to take this with you. Together with your IDs, the fit test card. The validity is two years. Questions? Now, let's proceed to the transport protocol. Okay. If you are transporting a patient who is a COVID-19 patient, for example, from ER, do you have ER stuff here? Okay. If you have this patient in isolation room, okay, admit this case to fourth floor. What are the things you have to consider? But in the process of how will you prepare the patient and what PPE? Yeah, answer all this. <laughs> okay. One by one. First step. Inform the receiving unit. Very good. Next. Notify the security guards. Notify the housekeeping department. They have to be with you before proceeding to the transport. Next. What else? You will wear. Have you read the protocol, the transport protocol, the transport card? Really? What will you wear? Aha, uh -huh, you didn't read. <laughs> you didn't read. Okay. You didn't read. So now I'll discuss the transport protocol for one by one first before we will proceed to the next. One by one. So contact first. For example, your patient is under contact precaution. The patient has a wound. Okay. Based on the transport card, which which 
should be brought. You have to bring this during the transport. Why? It will guide you how to prepare, how to do the transport. The first step. Like what you have mentioned, the first step is notifying the receiving unit and tell them the diagnosis, tell them the isolation precaution. So step 10, inform the housekeeping, inform the uh, security. Security for what? For how to do it. Because sometimes it's not possible people are just crossing. So security should do their part in crowd control. Next, the housekeeping in the pathway okay of our transport then how are we going to prepare this patient under contact precaution with wound we have to dress impervously how do it what's the definition of impervious dressing this is good dressing this is a dressing without leakage okay then the patient should dress with clean gown and you have to cover with clean sheet. And the healthcare worker should wear which PPE? They only have to wear gloves without gown. Okay? Clarification. Isolation, isolation sign for contact precaution. What's the PPE? Gown and gloves. So you have to... PPE you wear for contact precaution is on gloves. We will transport a patient under contact precaution. We will only wear gloves. Clear. And after the transport, we for the stretcher. What is the disinfectant MOH approved in our hospital? Surfacefe is the available approved disinfectant in the hospital right now. Next, droplet transport. The droplet precaution for a patient under droplet precaution. The first step will always be the same notifying the receiving unit what's the diagnosis, what's the What's the isolation precaution? What's next? What's next? We have to give or offer the patient with surgical mask. If the patient can tolerate it, they will be transported with surgical mask. But if the patient cannot tolerate it, the nurse will wear the surgical mask. Okay, and we will proceed to the disinfection of the structure and the wheelchair after doing the transport. Next, airborne precaution. If we will transport a patient under airborne precaution, the same first step, notify the receiving unit, notify the housekeeping, notify the security, and be with them during the transport. Then, the patient can, if the patient can tolerate surgical mask, you have to give them. Patient cannot tolerate, cannot, can't, can't tolerate surgical mask. We will wear N95. And then after that, after the transport, we the structure. Do you have any question? Is it clear? Yes. Based on this, if the patient cannot tolerate, we will wear N95. But if the patient can tolerate it, we have to educate them with tough etiquette. We will just perform and hygiene. But out of this moment, we are using surgical and universal masking. So if the patient can tolerate it, he will have his um, mask, surgical mask. At this point, we are all wearing our universal masking. Okay? So, but if the patient cannot tolerate it, we will wear N95. Have you seen the email? I saw the email from... The 
conclusion there of what I discussed earlier is someone not So I will take that give us also additional information, a better visualization of what I discussed earlier. It has an illustration. Another question. Clear? I will ask just to verify. Uh, if your patient is a COVID positive case. You are patient to another department. So how will you do the process? Very good. Very good. Excellent. You are not giving N95. You know why? If they have symptoms, for example, we are offering surgical masks. During Okay, clear. Any other questions? We have discussed a while ago AJPs or aerosol generating procedure. AJPs, aerosol generating procedure. Mentioned the examples like bronchoscopy, nebulization, intubation, CPR, um, suctioning, NPS, a lot of procedures which we Aerosol. So, in order for us to protect ourselves, we have to wear full PPE, especially the N95 and face oh. The housekeeping are doing their daily cleaning. The regular rooms, even in the isolation rooms, or with patients with But whenever the patient will be discharged, the patient will be. Will um, a deaf patient, for example, with basket case, we will do terminal cleaning. Terminal cleaning is starting from the ceiling, from the wall, and the floor. Why we are discussing this? This is for housekeeping. We nurses have our responsibility or share in this terminal cleaning. We have to make sure that we are supervising the process, especially the assigned in the charge of that unit will be supervising, monitoring the process, and make sure it's well done, efficiently, effectively. Um, evidence that housekeeping have their part, nurses have their own part in this terminal cleaning, and all should sign. So, if the patient discharge, COVID nineteen positive or suspected, discharge. The nurse will remove the linen, remove the equipment, disinfect using the surfaces, MOH approved disinfectant, then call the housekeeping. The housekeeping will come. They will remove the garbages. Then they will start to disinfect the highly touched surfaces, the knob, um, the cabinets, the table, the telephone, and they will also do the terminal cleaning from the ceiling so we also know i also put this in this awareness sign how they are preparing their solutions okay if they will start from the ceiling they will use five liters of water and half bottle of clorox then they will proceed to the walls they will use five liters of water and half of the clorox they will mop the floor. They will have to use the three baskets, color blue, red, and green. They will use 10 liters of water. First mopping will be with powder detergent. Second mopping will be purely water. Then third mopping will be 10 liters of water and one bottle of Clorox as the third and final mopping. And this procedure usually takes around one hour 
one and a half hours. So if you will, you are a nurse and you have a patient for admission, why there's no room not available yet? So we have to know it's taking one to one and a half hours to prepare the room during the terminal cleaning. After terminal cleaning, another process will be performed, which is in the crisis um, condition, the biomed are doing this fumigation process. Fumigation is the use of hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, 6%, and we are using here in our hospital two kinds of machines. We have the new machines, this is a smaller one, and it's taking only 40 minutes, and we can use the machine the process but the new machine that's the old machine okay the new machine which is smaller and taking longer time to process the fumigation procedure it's taking three hours before we use the machine so very important this fumigation paper Um, for example, at 2 p.m., they will start. Then, if they use the uh, old machine, they will go at 2.40, meaning we can enter the room at 2.40. Yes, that's the reason. If the new machine is used, after three hours, we can go in the room. Questions? Do you have any questions until this point? Um anyone who has the card for the for the new guideline for hand washing and hand rubbing? the ample amount of sanitizer what is ample amount is it one press two press three pumps or four pumps in the new guideline I, we read this we read this and as mentioned a pump full <laughs> but pump full a literal pump full is really pump full it's too much so ample amount of Sanitizer, then face the audience with social distancing. So check how they are performing it. Are they performing it correct process? So Praveen, what's the first step? Huh? Pump to pump. Dorsum, I'm to dorsum, vice versa. Then interlock, finish. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm telling you now. Again, every step, all of that. I'm to pump, then I'm to dorsum, vice versa. Rotational finger pump. So it's going to be like this rotational <laughs> because of the card. Then finger lips and remove the, the step of the lid. In the new guidelines, they remove the lid and the step. So even in hand washing, they removed the wrist.
Removing or disposing our sharps container. We are disposing the sharps container when it's three fourths. Full three over four. Okay. Uh, when are we changing our washable curtains? If it's visibly soiled, if it's contaminated, and every fourteen days or two weeks. Okay. How about the the disposable, the blue curtains? Six months. Okay. What are the five moments of hand hygiene? Five moments of hand hygiene. What? Five moments of hand hygiene. Before touching the patient, Jane, next. Before a septic procedure, Ivan. Okay, after the the surrounding of the patient, and lastly, after the body is through with its process. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We take your seats. Um, Ali, uh, Manjula, are you Manjula? Are two Elizabeths and any Saji. Saji. Okay, take the ample amount of sanitizer. Ample amount of sanitizer, and we will perform hand rubbing. Yalla. We have to make sure the nails are trimmed, no jewelries allowed, and ample amount of sanitizer with social distancing, please. All right. Palm to palm. When are you going to document your name in the healthcare worker contact uh, with infectious disease posted on the floor of the kitchen? We have a paper healthcare worker contact with, uh, with infectious disease. Whenever we are going inside the patient room, we have to point everything. Here, because in other units, they are just putting their name once. For example, in one month, it is five. In one month, it is two times. In five months, or six months, they assign to them. They only have to go one to put their name the board. So it has to be written every shift. You will go to five. Is it clear? Clear. Thank Thanks so much. Dwayne and Terry Apple, all of us will do the hand rubbing. Who will volunteer to start the competency? I look at it from there and now. Please come and we will start in two minutes our competency. Okay. Uh, I can do math. 
dahil tulungan nyo na ako, ano kung magagawa ko. Sige, you can go. Sige. Actually, you have to go, you have to go to my office. But first, if uh, we're having a ball, then I feel thirsty. Okay, you have to finish. I'm a good person. Competency for all. Yes. Okay, Jane, you'll also go for <laughs> attendance sheet. Make sure you sign the attendance sheet before leaving. Okay, finish. Why only 10 seconds? Wait. You need to do the dunning, the dunning of PPEs. Random selection. Okay. We have to have uh, more exposure for the very nice uh, yes. O only one. Okay. Observe how she will wear or how she will don the PPE. What's the first one? The gown. The first. Next. Have you watched the video? Of Danny and Duffing by the CDC. Who already watched it? One, two, three, four. What? My internet. <laughs> I'm so sad. <laughs> Isabel. Oh, my phone. My internet. Isabel. What? <laughs> I'll check that out. <laughs> Geraldine, you watch it? Did the head nurse send to your group? So, uh, disregard. <laughs> okay, next. Did you watch the video? No? Do you need an assistant? You need an assistant in wearing the PPE. Or you can do it now. Okay. Okay. What's next? Okay, how to remove it? Well, she has to remove it from the clothes. Inside the stone, and then it will be out. Next. Remove the gown. It's like a gown. So when you're ready, you have to. Then drop in the yellow thing next. Uh -huh. If you're assuming that you have a facial, it has to when we remove the facial. First is the glove. Second will be the facial. Okay, not after the now. So gloves, facial, down, and mask. Surgical mask will be removed where? Inside patient room. N95? Outside patient room. We have to take the mask, but we have to discard the paper. Oops. Take the plastic mask out. So, whatever you want. So, we are using also universal masking every time. Everyone should wear masks. And we have to change our mask when it's done. And this is single use mask. Physical distance, we have to be away 1.5 meters from each other. And we have to make sure that group etiquette is followed all, all the time. 
Do you have any question? Enough to start the competency. Anyone? Volunteer, I will pick. I will choose. A random selection. Spin the wheel. Anyone? 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 We will start with those who have been. In this situation, <laughs> all of us are in this situation. Right? Anyone? Review, review. Few seconds. Yella Dwayne, I can feel your excitement and enthusiasm <laughs> to finish this competency. You will be. Answering the questions in front of all to be the any anything you want to clarify, you will be an instrument of learning by those who will hear you doing the competency. I know, are you still there? I know I'm coming. I know please come. And be with me in the competency check off. Okay, first question What are the case definitions of COVID? Okay. What are the epidemiological links? Sure. Very good. Correct. Then the second. Very good. What are, how do we define confirmed case? Yes. So why we're doing this right now, we have done this before, but not for all. For example, um, 90, only 99% received the education and 96% of the nurses received the competency. And not all of those 96% are really competent. Some of them are uh, categorized as needs for their training. But why we repeated this? Because of the reopening of the hospital, and they will do, again, the rounds for all the nursing units. And we want to make sure that all the nurses will answer their questions confidently. Okay, so whenever, it, this is not just during the competency time to remember all this. 
you have to keep yourself updated and always um, on your feet every day. So you have to know all this every day. You have to expect that people will come, will come and ask you about this. So this is just a test for us. This is just a rehearsal. During the rounds, we don't know who will be with us and who are the people involved. So this is a good chance you are in front of your colleagues because there you may have Dr. Fahad, you will have Dera Bushaira, you will have your headness, you will have the quality, you will have maybe surveyor or MOH. I'm hearing that the Sibahi is coming again soon in these coming days. So we have to be always prepared. Okay. So what are the components of the visual triage checklist? Two components. The exposure risk, which is the upper portion, the score of three, which includes the epidemiological link, plus the MERS-CoV question about the camel. And the second part is That's correct. If you have a shit, if you have a diarrhea like this, <laughs> the symptoms, the signs and symptoms. Yes, very good. That's on the first exposure to the camera. So what is the uh the transmission if you have encounter with Yeah, encounter or you will go inside the patient's room. Mask. Yes. Suspected. Same. Confirmed and suspected. They are, they are both and 95. What is the acceptable distance between patients in ER? In the ward? One point? In the waiting area? In the ICU. Very good. What do you mean by AGP? What are the precautions to be used? And uh, where will you do the AGP? for
what will be your decision? Can transfer which mass? Repetition can occur. It's not recommended during transport, only gloves for only precaution, surgical precaution. Okay, next. The patient will be discharged. The patient is discharged. So what will be done to the room? What will be the disinfectant to be used? Sir. Surf not tight. <laughs> Surf are safe. Okay. What are the agents to be used by the housekeeping? In terminal cleaning and powder detergent. What do you mean by prolonged close contact? <laughs> Experience. <laughs> okay. Um, distance. Not LDR. Okay. Um, what What is this risk exposure if your patient is wearing a mask and you are not wearing your mask? Patient is wearing a mask. You are wearing your mask. Is this correct? What's the management? No. For medium exposure, it will be the same for all the medium exposures. You will stop your duty, you'll do NPS, and resume after negative result. You're, you mentioned two, two NPS. I, do, I, thought, I thought two NPS. Uh, sorry, my mistake. My bad. <laughs> okay. That's why you change. <laughs> you have to stand with your answer okay <laughs> okay both of you are not wearing your mask are you sure <laughs> okay, next. Your patient is not wearing a mask. You are wearing your mask. What is this kind of exposure? Patient not wearing a mask. You are wearing your mask. Very good. Both of you wearing your mask. Management. Do you need NPS? What if you will um, have a symptom? Okay. 
So you have to wait for the decision. What you will do is to go to a physician for assessment. So when will you be classified as clear from COVID-19? Very good. What are the types of hand hygiene and the duration of doing it? Wala naman si ano, si ano. Where's ano? Can you message ano? Pavita? Forty to sixty seconds. Five moments. Okay, if the patient is um, contact precaution, you are assigned for this patient, you will go inside the room, contact precaution. You will do jumpy jumpy for the patient. What will you wear? Gown and gloves. Okay. If you will go without gloves and gown, and you will have um, extensive physical contact with the patient, what exposure is this? It's medium. Yes, I didn't discuss, but it's there. I just remembered. <laughs> I just remembered. So it's a part of this. Nice to know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you will do an extensive body contact with the patient and you will not wear the PPE, it is medium risk. But if you wear, it's low. Yes, continue to. So what are the PPE? What's the PPE for airborne precaution? Gloves? Gown? Face mask? Surgical mask. For airborne, nothing is correct. <laughs> All of what you've mentioned are wrong. <laughs> okay. What's the PPE for airborne precaution? You will go inside the patient. Airborne. Airborne N95 Droplet Contact Correct Sequence of Dunning Removing it. Very good. Where will you remove your surgical mask? N95. When will you dispose Sharps container? Washable curtains. Very good. What do you mean by social distancing? Oh. <laughs> what do you mean by universal masking? If you will be assigned to a patient isolation in the floor, when are you going to document your name in the healthcare worker contact with infectious disease block sheet? Very good. One, two, three, four. Next. One, six, seven. Do you have calculator? One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, calculator. One, two, three, four. Four, six, 
35 minus 7. 6 again uh, 35 minus 7 times 2 plus 6 divided by 70 times 100 89 percent Score is 80%. Good, um, you will leave this with me for me. Next, anyone who wants to. Diane. Aha, so the friend is. I will not finish everyone. It will be 38 in my watch. And I will only finish Diane. And a look will come. I think only one will be. So the last will be. Uh, you have to go to my office starting tomorrow for the competency. Every day I'm doing 9 to 10 here in the, in the auditorium just to do competency. 9 to 10. But if you're available from 10 to 1, I, I will be in the hall office or I will ask some, a head nurse to do the competency for you. Okay. Okay, I report Okay, next. Diane. Nag Diane of COVID-19. Okay. What do you mean by close contact? The distance and the time. What are the components of respiratory triage? the score? What's the management? What's the instruction? Transmission precaution of suspected or confirmed COVID-19. What's the PPE? PPE for COVID-19.
What's the transmission precaution? So what's the PPE for contact and airborne? Okay. What's the um, allowed distance between patient in ER? In the ward? In the ICU? In waiting area? What do you mean by AGP? Where should it be done? Where will you do it? Yes. Where will you perform it? What's the PPE? N95. What's the process of transportation of the patient? Then, comes the pain. Then, if the if the patient is droplet precaution, anyone who wants to proceed with competency. Uh, uh, yes, okay. No problem. Sorry. Traplet precaution. Well, how you will prepare the patient? What will be the PPO for the patient? Okay. Cleaning the isolation room. What type of cleaning are we doing after discharge? What's your role? What are the agents used by the housekeeping? Uh huh. What do you mean by prolonged close contact? No, you answered this a while ago. Twenty minutes. If your patient is wearing a mask and you are not wearing your mask, What's this? Management. Patient not patient wearing a mask. You are not wearing your mask. Assume after negative result. If the patient is wearing a mask and you are not wearing your mask. Okay, very good. Both of you are wearing your mask. The patient not wearing the mask. You are wearing your mask. Both of you not wearing your mask. Management for low. No need for NPS. Both high. Uh, high. The staff will have um, symptoms. What will be done? For the others, I don't think if we can still finish another one. Um, I know you want to finish it today. Do you want to finish it today? <laughs> We will resume this tomorrow morning at 9. If you're available at 9 or any time of the day, just call me or ask your headers to contact me. So we will put um, the evaluator who will be checking your competency. Okay, if you want to stay to listen for the questions, it's okay. But if not, 
can free the leave. Thank you so much. Continue. Um, when will a staff be cleared from COVID-19? When's positive? Two negative results, 48 hours, asymptomatic. Types of hand hygiene. Duration. Five moments. What's the PPE for airborne? Droplet. Contact. Learning and duffing sequence. Again. Where will you remove your surgical mask? N95. When will you dispose sharps container? For 10. What do you mean by physical distancing? Universal masking. When will you enter your name in the healthcare worker contact to infectious disease? Self-acknowledgement. Thank you. 
Sino bang nandito ngayon? Who's here with us now? Who's still here with us? But if you want email of one or not. Okay. Okay. Who's still with us here? Who oh, is still with us now? Exposure, exposure, but there's another one. Um, this is about the case definition. As came about one with the case definition. If there are discussions, like you need to remind me, okay. Thank you. Um, again. <laughs> uh, 
No, not here. Okay. Bye, thank you. At nine, for the competency at nine. Otherwise, if I'm not here, I'll be in the office. But nine to ten, I'm here. Then after that, I will be in the office. Sino pang kasama natin dito ngayon? Sino pang nandito ngayon sa ating LS? Press 1 naman dyan para makita natin kung sino kasama natin dito na bumisita pa.
for this still with us right now please just press one for me to know who are you or sino po ito shout out sa ating tatlo pa na kasama ngayon salamat salamat thank you thank you sa pag stay Tatapusin ko na itong LS na ito. Maraming salamat sa lahat ng nag-attend, sa lahat ng naka-interact sa atin. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. This will end now. Bye. Thank you.